G'day guys, Nick here from CPAT Reviews. Welcome to part three of our three part series on the Philips Respironics Dream Station Machine. Part one, we looked at general setup. Part two, we looked at patient menu. And then part three, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper and go into the clinical menu. Now your clinical menu is where your healthcare professional would normally go to change things like your CPAP pressure. Um, in order to do so, there's a little bit of a trick we need to do in terms of holding down the uh, certain buttons. Um, so we'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But having access to the clinical menu enables you to fine tune your therapy just that little bit more to make it more comfortable so you're just gonna get a better night's sleep. It really gives you keys to the machine and the tools necessary to make sure you are getting the most comfortable and the best night's sleep possible. Um, and normally you have to go back and forth to your, you know, your provider to do this. It's time consuming, it's annoying. Um, so this enables you to take control of your own therapy. So without further ado, this is normally our uh, patient menu on the front here. So what we're gonna do to get into the clinical menu is we're gonna hold down the click dial, we're gonna push that in, and then simultaneously we're gonna push in this uh, ramp button with the triangle on it up the top. So we push these two buttons in, hold simultaneously, keep holding them down, hold them down, and then you'll see the menu drop, there it goes. All right, so now we have access to the clinical menu, and the first thing that comes up is therapy. If we click the click wheel in, it takes us into the therapy section of the clinical menu. Uh, the first part here is the mode. Like you can see this is set to auto. If you've got an automatic machine, it should pretty much be set to auto. Uh, if you've got a fixed pressure machine, like a CPAP, it'll probably only give you access to CPAP, it won't give you access to the automatic. But because we've got the automatic machine, we can run this machine in auto or CPAP modes, but we're gonna run it in automatic machine mode because it's quite, uh, it's a bit silly to get an automatic machine and run it in CPAP mode because you should have just got a CPAP to begin with. Um, OptiStart, um, we're gonna leave that off, okay? What OptiStart does is it starts the pressure, the therapy, it starts the therapy at a pressure closer to what we call the 90th percentile pressure of your previous night. So if your machine on the automatic is coming in at around you know, 90th percentile pressure of 10 or 11 or 12 or something around that, it means the OptiStart is gonna start it closer to that level. All right. What it does is it gets rid of, if you're someone who drops to sleep really quickly and starts having apnea straight away, OptiStart reduces the, those events happening. Instead of the machine starting lower and taking time to gradually build up the pressure and you having lots of you know, sleep apnea in the meantime, the OptiStart means that you, it's gonna take away those events, all right? But it also means that the pressure will start higher which might make it harder to get it off to sleep for some individuals, okay? So I recommend starting OptiStart off and only turn it on if you're finding that your apnea hypopnea index is hard to control. So if you can't get an apnea hypopnea index less than five, it might be an option to turn that on to see what effect that has on your AHI. Uh, if we rotate to the right there, we have our auto min and auto max values. So currently auto min is four, and auto max at 20. So this, the auto min and auto max, they're basically um, levels that can be set, pressure levels. Now the machine's algorithm that determines the pressure will work between these two values, all right? So if it's set at four, which is the machine can't go any lower than four, and max 20, the machine has op optimal range to change the pressure. All right, so it can change the pressure between four and 20, depending on what's required. We have the ability though to change these. So let's just, to do that, we just click it in while it's highlighted, and we can use this dial to go up or down. Now we might change the automatic min value if we find that at the start of therapy, when we first turn it on, it doesn't feel like there's enough air coming through the device. If you're feeling suffocated, like you have to really suck in the air, it might be worth bringing up this automatic min value so that we get a bit more flow as we're breathing, okay? There's a bit more air coming into the mask so it doesn't feel so suffocating, all right? So let's just do that now and change this to six. Now, when it comes to the auto max at 20, majority of providers will leave that at 20. Um, now, sometimes this can be a disadvantage to the, to the uh, patient using the therapy if the machine pressure of a nighttime is getting too high 
and causing them to continuously be disturbed. So if your device, when the automatic machine, you fall asleep, the automatic machine starts to adjust the pressure upwards and it's continuously getting too high where the mass starts to leak too much and it's waking you up and it's actually causing more harm than good because you're frequently getting woken up and you want to throw the machine through the window, you might be better bringing this automatic, uh, this auto max level down a bit. Now, the trick is, where, what level do you bring it down to? I mean, where do you bring that down to? Now, a good um, way to determine where an appropriate level is, is to use the 90th percentile pressure. And this, I'll show you how to get to that in a minute. Um, but basically what your 90th percentile pressure is, is if you use a seven day average 90th percentile pressure, it means that 90% of the night, the therapy, therapy was at that value or less. So an example is 90 percentile pressure is 10. That means that 90% of the night, to control your sleep apnea, the pr pressure was nine, uh, 10 or below 90% of the night. So it was only higher than 10 for 10% of the night. So if you're wanting to control 90% of your sleep apnea, you could set that max, this auto max, at that level, and it will control 90% of your sleep apnea. So, <coughs> so that's not a bad value to have a look. You know, maybe just go one or two above the max and see how you find that. So let's just say we, we looked at our 90 percentile, we saw it was 10 over a 7 day average, and we're just going to put it at 12, all right? Now, we can run that at an auto min at 6 and auto 12. We can run that over a week and see what that, that happens to our apnea hypopnea index. If our apnea hypopnea index, AHI, is continually, like, you know, above 10, we might have capped the pressure a little bit too low, so we might want to try and go up to 13, 13.5, 14, and see what that effect has. If it's still not coming down, we might try turning on the Opti Start, so that way that higher initial pressure might get rid of some of those early events in the night that could be causing that artificial apnea hypopnea index, or the apnea hypopnea index to be really high, but skewed because you're having a lot of events at the start of the night. All right, so that's your, that's your four things you can look at there. If we keep scrolling to the right, we've got main menu. Click that, go back to the main menu. The next one across is the comfort. So let's click comfort and go into there. So the first one here uh, is the uh, humidification mode. Now, because we've got heated, if you've got heated tubing in your system, don't worry about whatever that one is. If you've just got standard tubing, so, you know, the tubing that doesn't click in, it just sort of pushes on, no heated element that runs through it you've got the option there of choosing adaptive or fixed. What adaptive does, it monitors, monitors the ambient humidification, humidity in the air around the machine, right? And then it adapts that, the heat plate, to deliver optimal humidification. So the heat plate of the humidification chamber is changing, right? It's changing to provide optimal humidification. Whereas if we put it at fixed, it means that the heat plate is just at one level, whatever we set it. It's not adapting to anything. So I reckon we run that. If you're not running a heated tube, run adaptive. If you're running, if you have got a heated tube, don't worry about that. The next one is the humidifier level. Okay, this can run between zero, which is off, no humidification, and up to five, which is maximum humidification. So the more we go up, the more moisture is going to be in the air. Now, you can change this obviously in patient settings as well, um, but. If you're dry in the throat or a bit parched in the mornings, you might need a bit more humidification. If you're getting a lot of condensation or rain out, as they call it, you might want to look at bringing that down a little bit. If we go one to the right there, we've got the tube temperature. Once again, we can run this between zero and five, zero being no temperature in the tube. And the more we go up, the more, the hotter that tube gets, all right? It's very handy here to tube because it resolves the issue around rain out and condensation, especially if you're running high levels of humidification. The next one here is smart ramp. Now, smart ramp is generally used if we're in fixed pressure mode, so CPAP mode. What that does is instead of a normal ramp, which would gradually build the pressure up over a set period of time to help you get off to sleep, smart ramp actually keeps the pressure very low. It doesn't gradually ramp up, it keeps it low, and then when you're asleep, it then adjusts upwards. So it basically keeps the pressure low until the pressure is required to treat the sleep apnea. All right, then we have um, ramp time and ramp start. So the ramp time, if you're using just a standard ramp, like not a smart ramp, um, 
then the ramp time, this would go from, it would run for 20 minutes, the ramp, and go from four to whatever our fixed pressure uh, CPAP set to. So we don't really need to worry about these values because we're using it in automatic mode, okay? These ramp features are generally used more so in fixed pressure mode, okay? Now the last two here are the flex type and then also the flex setting, all right? So your flex type, you've got two options, A flex and C flex. C flex reduces the pressure as you breathe out. So it's what's called pressure relief. As you exhale, as you breathe out, the machine drops the pressure by a certain value, and that's the, by the value of the flex setting. So if your flex setting is three, which is the highest number, it runs between one, two, and three, it means it's gonna drop it quite a large amount, the pressure as you breathe out. If it's two, it's a little bit less, and one a little bit less again. So if you're having trouble breathing out against the pressure, I recommend putting the flex up quite high, but you can play around with those values. Now, the difference between A flex and C flex is C flex drops the pressure as you breathe out on the exhale. A flex drops the pressure on the inhale, at the end of the inhale, and also as you exhale. So as you finish your breathe in, it drops the pressure, and as you exhale, breathe out, it also drops the pressure. So it's just a bit more comfort again. So I recommend trying A-Flex to start with. I think that's the premier type flex mode that there is. Start it on three, that's probably gonna be the most comfortable level. If you find that the pressure going between, you know, the full pressure and then dropping off as you exhale is a bit annoying, some people do, you might wanna bring that, bring that flex down, okay? But just, look, it enables you to try the different options there. Um, if we continue on, we've got tube type. Now this is locked at the moment because we have our heated tube in there. If we take that tube out, you can see we can change between 15 and 20. So if we've got standard tube, uh, we've got 15 and 22, and that's the diameter of the tubing, okay? So you should be able to find out on the packaging or on the, on the tubing itself whether or not you've got 15 or 22 mil tubing, you can set that up. But when we click our tube in, because it's heated tube, it sort of just locks it straight to 15 and with the H, which means heated. Tube type lock. Now, this is what your healthcare professional can normally do. It can, it, it can lock you out of changing the tube. Okay, but we'll turn that, we'll keep that off because we don't want any locks on. Mask type, if you've got a Philips Respironics mask, they come with a little value and it'll be an X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Uh, if, you don't have, if you don't have a Philips mask, if you've got a ResMed or a Fisher & Pike or another variety of masks, just have it as off. Otherwise, you can just, it'll have it on the mask or on the packaging of the mask, what number yours is, just type it in there, okay? It basically informs the machine what style of mask you have and so the machine knows what's, what, what amount of pressure relief to give based on the mask that you currently have. Um, so we'll leave that off for now. Uh, mask type lock, again, once again for your clinician if they wanna lock you out of being able to change your mask. And then check mask fit. Now we want this on, we definitely want that on because that enables you to put your mask on and run the check mask fit mode before you go to sleep, which then enables you to get that green tick so you know that your, your mask is fitted correctly you know that when the pressure goes up, when you are asleep, the mask is gonna seal correctly, and that way you're not gonna be woken up by mask leaks and stuff like that. We'll continue to go to the right clockwise, uh, click main menu. We go across again, we have a device setting, so if we click this, this is where we can turn on, we want AHI on, because this enables us to check our apnea hypopnea index in the patient menu. Um, we have automatic on, okay, automatic on is what it sort of sounds like. You put your mask on, start breathing, the machine's gonna automatically turn on. Auto off, uh, we also want on, okay, so automatic off and it's on, okay, which means that we take our mask off in the night or something like that, the machine's gonna turn off. We get up to go to the bathroom, the machine turns off. We basically don't have to touch the button to turn them on and off. Uh, language is English. Uh, don't clear the default reminders, we want them on. Okay, they're gonna remind you of things like changing your filter, which is handy. Uh, and then we don't really wanna reset the data unless um, you know, you're know you getting it from another patient or something like that. Uh, then we go back to the main menu again. Uh, and one more to the right there, we've got our info. Now info is your data info. So I'll just run through this pretty quickly because I'm sure I'm boring the living daylights out of you. Uh, this sort of gives us therapy hours, uh, day, how many days we've used it over four hours, 
um, you know, compliance number if you want to phone that into your physician and stuff like that. But if, what you want to do with these ones, I'll just give you the really important ones. So scroll across to the right here, scroll across to the right here, scroll across to the right here. Um, your therapy hours is handy to know because you want sort of your seven day average to be definitely over four. Um, that's four hours per night. Um, you know, that's anything less and you're probably not wearing it long enough, all right? You know, if you can get eight per night, that's great. Tells you the machine hours, how many um, machine hours you got there. Your mask fit's important. Um, your mask fit, if your mask fit's perfect, right, it'll be 100%. If you're getting large leaks, so a large amount of leak from the mask, I talked about this in part two, it means that um, the device, the automatic device can't determine what is apnea and what is hypopnea, it's, it's, it'll struggle to pick up your events because there's so much mass leak happening and that means it won't be able to adjust the pressure accordingly, okay? So you definitely want to get to a close 100% as possible. Uh, if you're you know, down and your percentage is dropping, you might need to look at changing your mask, getting a new mask seal, getting a new mask headgear, or just work on your fitting, okay? But make sure your mask fit is as close to 100% as possible. Um, apnea hypopnea index, this is important. Okay, we want this value to be less than five, ideally. If it's between sort of five and eight, it's not too bad. If it's going above 10, you probably need to adjust your settings um, or speak to your healthcare professional um, because it's probably not, not quite good enough, really. Um, so always kind of tend to look at the seven day averages or the third day averages. You know, one day is here and there, you can have an, an anomalies, you know, if you've had a few drinks or got a cold or something like that. So tend to look at the averages, but you kind of want to look at your seven day average, try and get it less than five if you can. And um, don't worry too much about periodic breathing. And then this is that 90th percentile pressure that I was talking about before, okay? So if you look at the seven day average and it's say running at around 12, it means that it gives us an idea of where we can bring out um, if that, if that, if those pressures are waking you up during the night time that when it gets too high, it gives us an idea where we can cap or bring our max pressure, our max auto pressure down to, just so that we're not going to get woken up by um, events like the machine bring getting too carried away with its pressure. All right, but we're still going to control ninety percent of our breathing, which is good. And then back to the main menu, and then patient, and then the last one's patient mode. So this is going to take us back to our patient menu. And that's done. So um, I hope that's giving you a bit of a, more of an insight into what your machine is capable of doing. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Um, you know, it's really good if you can start to understand what the machine is capable of doing and, and you can start to change your therapy so that it is doing a really good job but is also comfortable, all right? Because if it's not comfortable, uh, it's going to do you more harm than good because it's going to wake up your partner, it's going to wake you up, and you're going to end up wanting to throw it through the window, and that's not what we want. All right, but uh, thanks for watching this three-part series. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video if you liked it. I know it's been a bit of a long-winded one, but um, we do appreciate you watching the videos, and we do appreciate your feedback. So uh, thanks again, and I hope you're getting a good night's sleep, and uh, all the best with your CPAP therapy. Ta.